thought I'd do a quick video on uh, some of the contraindications to the administration of neuraxial anesthesia. Um, so when we're talking neuraxial anesthesia, remember we're talking about both spinals and epidurals. Now, you know, we can do a whole other series of videos on what the differences between these are, but the essential difference is this is going into the subarachnoid or intrathecal space. Same place that you get CSF. And this is going into uh, the epidural space, so it's outside of the dura. So it's not actually going into the, the meningeal layers of the spinal cord. Uh, but the contraindications uh, are more or less the same. So starting off our list, and, and you'd be surprised at how often you run into this, is actually patient refusal. There are a number of patients who actually don't like the idea of getting a needle in their back, and it scares them. Um, so if they're really worried about it and you can't convince them, then that's a contraindication to giving that type of anesthesia. And you can think about causes of increased intracranial pressure. So this is situations like trauma settings. If there's a suspicion of a head injury, um, uh, then uh, you shouldn't be doing uh, any kind of spinal or epidural anesthesia because uh, if you were to poke into the uh, subarachnoid space um, and there's increased intracranial pressure, you can get brain herniation, which obviously we don't want. That's... Uh, also a contraindication for lumbar puncture in the emergency room, which you've probably heard of as well. Uh, then we can talk about coagulopathies. Now, these are contraindicated because if you were to cause some bleeding uh, in and around the spinal cord, you can cause what's called a uh, spinal hematoma, which, uh, if there's difficulty clotting, can get very large and cause... Uh, spinal cord compression um, and causing various distal neuropathies uh, which obviously we don't want so that's a contraindication as well now we can talk about uh, fixed cardiac output states and the reason, and, and also severe hypovolemia, and we can talk about that more in a, in a second, volemia. Now, fixed cardiac output states, this is things like aortic stenosis, mitral stenosis, uh, Hockham. Um, or uh, uh, and and the reason that these are are contraindicated is because the, the cardiac output itself is is fixed and 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 what that means is that means uh, when you get one of the main physiologic effects of spinal and epidural anesthesia is uh, severe vasodilation and and hypotension. Um, caused by uh, the, uh, the actual local anesthetic when it's going in has a, has a preference to knock off sympathetic fibers. And so you, you get uh, an unbalanced parasympathetic versus sympathetic, and as a result you get hypotension and vasodilation. Um, and in these fixed cardiac output states, um, like aortic stenosis, like mitral stenosis, like Hockham, um, you get situations in which uh, the heart cannot compensate by increasing the cardiac output uh, to compensate for the vasodilation and hypotension that's caused by the local anesthesia. Um, and so in situations like aortic stenosis, you can imagine where um, not only does that compromise the blood flow to the end organs like the brain, like the kidneys, like the liver, um, but it also can compromise the blood flow to the endocardium of the heart. So, for example, in, in the example of aortic stenosis, uh, over a long time you get the development of um, a dilated 
left ventricle with a thickened uh, wall. Uh, and, and as we know from our basic physiology, the, uh, the endocardium is supplied by the diastolic pressure. So if you end with a thickened wall, you need a higher diastolic pressure to cause perfusion of that, that thick wall. Um, so in a situation where you have um, a drop in the diastolic pressure, like you would uh, when you give a spinal anesthesia, or an epidural anesthesia, um, you end up with a situation where the the endocardial blood supply or blood flow is compromised, and so that's these are various these are very dangerous situations in which to give spinal or neuraxial anesthesia, and in severe. In other causes of severe hypovolemia, so like sepsis or just, you know, a general hemorrhage, you would imagine the same thing. Um, the, the body doesn't have, or the heart doesn't have the volume or the preload it needs to compensate for the hypotension and vasodilation. Um, so it can't increase cardiac output to compensate for that. You get uh, potential uh, compromise of, uh, of end organ blood flow. And, I mean, you wouldn't think that you'd be in a rush to put in a, a, a spinal or an epidural, you know, in a trauma situation or a uh, where, where there's lots of bleeding or something like that, but, you know, septic pictures come along fairly often. You can think about bowel obstructions or perforated hollow viscous, um, where if the general surgeon is going to go in and do a laparotomy, that it would be very helpful to have uh, a, a long-acting epidural in, in, in place. So that's just a simple overview uh, of the major contraindications to neuraxial anesthesia. Thanks for watching.